This is the Honda Amaze facelift. Wait, let me turn it around for you. This is the angle that you want to see the Honda Amaze facelift from. From the rear, the changes look quite minimal. There's some design changes in the taillights and there's a strip of chrome on the rear bumper, but up front, boy, it does look like a larger Honda now. And Honda hopes that the changes to the Amaze would help bring some excitement back into the compact sedan segment. Does it? We're finding out. That bigger Honda look is largely courtesy a new front grille. It's now a slimmer chrome bar joined by two slats below that help take away some of that heavy forehead look of the pre-facelift car. The fog lamps are LEDs now and the surrounds are outlined with more chrome. There's more chrome still, with the door handles now in the shiny stuff. But it's the machined 15-inch alloy wheels that resemble the ones from the previous city that add to the bigger Honda look the most. We ran through the changes at the rear already, but the C-shaped LED taillight signature does gel better with the shape of the lights themselves. Not much has changed inside the cabin of the Amaze with this facelift. What you do get is silver trim around the dashboard and the door pads and a little bit of uh, matte chrome around the AC vents. Honda could have used this opportunity to fix some of the shortcomings with the Amaze, namely the slight lack of underthigh support on the front seats, the lack of a driver's armrest, and reach adjustment for the steering. But it is what it is. Uh, Honda could have also potentially thrown in a sunroof and made the Amaze even more of a value proposition. Other misses include the fact that the infotainment system remains the same. So you do get wired smartphone support. Uh, wireless support could have been something that could have moved the game forward just a little bit. There is a wireless charger available, but that's an optional accessory available from dealers. The central armrest is also available as an accessory, but really should have been standard. That aside, the upholstery gets contrast stitching and map lights have been added at the front, while the features list includes full keyless entry locking, push button start, multi view reversing camera, cruise control, driver's window auto up down, two airbags, and more. Space is still well managed with more than adequate knee room, though there's only a finger's worth of headroom for my 5 foot 11 inch frame in the rear. Unfortunately, the Amaze is still missing rear AC vents. The boot is large, the largest in the segment in fact, at 420 litres and there's extra NVH insulation on the inside of the boot lid now. Given nothing's changed mechanically in the Amaze facelift, we thought it'd be wise to drive the most popular Amaze variant there is, this, the petrol manual. Now, according to Honda, the petrol sells about 87% in terms of overall sales volumes with diesel accounting for the remaining 13% and of that, the diesel CVT splits about half the sales with the diesel manual and in the petrol, it's the automatic that gets maybe about 20% so obviously that means that most people would like to know how this drives. Now, like we said, the engines and gearboxes remain unchanged. There's no change to suspension tuning and the car drives exactly how we remember it. This being the 1.2 litre naturally aspirated petrol with a very nice shifting 5-speed manual. In order of likely importance to you, that means that the clutch pedal itself, the clutch action, is quite light if a little springy. So that should mean working it in the city will be a breeze. What's also very nice and is a typical trait of Honda cars is this the distance between the steering wheel and the gear lever being typically short and this just adds to the feeling that this box is such a joy to use even though the shifts themselves don't feel quite as precise as some of the older Hondas that we sample. That being said, the ratios are well spaced out to make the most of the 90 PS and 110 Newton meters of torque that this engine gives you. That does mean that when you get a speed breakers versus some of its turbocharged rivals, you can just gloss over them with the revs dipping under a thousand RPM and a completely smooth takeoff from that point. 
Unlike some rivals, the Maze doesn't ask for a gear change into fifth at city speeds, which makes us wonder if the Top Gear could have been made a little taller to help its highway cruise abilities, the engine spinning at a lofty 3500 RPM at 120 kmph. While Honda's added more insulation to the boot area, we do wish that they perhaps had added some more insulation to the firewall because this horn sounds like it's coming from right inside the car and that could have been something that would have added to the premiumness of the maze. The ride quality of the maze remains pretty much how we remember it, which means that it is well damped but can get a little noisy at lower speeds if you're really paying attention. But overall, it's a very pleasing ride and if you really do start gunning for it, <laughs> the Amaze will put a smile on your face. That said, it does feel a little underdamped at high speeds with a little too much dive under heavy braking and over undulations. But since the trade-off is comfort, it's one that most people would end up appreciating. As an extension of that, the Amaze does exhibit some roll and lean in corners, but there are good amounts of grip from the relatively skinny tyres. Visually, there's just enough freshness to the front of the Honda Amaze facelift to make you take a second glance with a definite air of a more premium Honda to it. But digging a little deeper shows up areas that the facelift could have addressed. Given the pricing of the range between Rs 6.34 lakh for the old model and Rs 7.25 lakh for the facelift, going up to Rs 11.15 lakh for the diesel CVT, it appears there is a very strong reason why the petrol manual is still the most popular of the bunch.